So today we're going to have a look at Constantia Neck. Now, this is arguably the most difficult part of Two Oceans Ultramath, and, and it's probably the section that you may be the most anxious about. And that's because the gradient, especially in the final two kilometers, is pretty severe. It gets up to 9-10%, and it comes off the back of a four or five kilometer climb gradually out of Heart Bay. So it really is tough. Now, unfortunately, there's no magic recipe. There's nothing that I can say that's going to make this suddenly feel easy and flat to you. And this is the reason you've done all the training, so that you can combat the challenge of Constantia Neck. What I will say is that in Boston, for example, on Monday, they're running the marathon, and they've got a section called Heartbreak Hill, and that's a few hundred meters long, and it's at a gradient that is about 4 5%. You're going to look forward to something that is much longer and steeper, and that's part of the challenge that makes this special, and also means that you're doing something special by finishing it. So rather than shy away from that challenge, I would suggest that you embrace it, look forward to it, and conquer it. In order to help you, I took the car out and drove the route from the 42k mark up to the summit. And these are some of the important things that you might want to look out for. So we've jumped ahead now, and we pick the race up again at the 42k mark. That is the marathon mark passing by right now. And to give you some context, you're on the very gradual climb out of Hart Bay. The road will continue upward for another 4 kilometers as you wind your way through the trees, but it really does bite in the last two k's. This is without doubt the most challenging part of the course. Not only do you have a marathon in your legs, but you'll now encounter a progressively steeper and steeper road until the final two kilometers, about as steep as anything this race or most others have to offer. Also, as you can see from the clip, you're pretty exposed to the sun here, so on a hot day, you may spend 10-15 minutes in direct sunlight, making it a little more challenging. This is really the part of the race where those training runs will start to kick in. The first important concept is pacing. Note that you are on a slight uphill and have in fact been since you left Heart Bay. It's not steep, perhaps 2-3%, but it's there and you'd notice it pretty quickly if you were cycling. You can see it ahead of you as well as you crest this hill, but it often gets overlooked because your mind begins to jump ahead to those final 2k where you do know that it is much steeper. This can lead you to misinterpret how you're feeling, and you'll either be running a little slower than you would on level roads, or you'll be able to hold your speed, but you'll feel a little heavy and sluggish. That is normal, it is a gradual climb after all. Also, if you're focused on your time, then that marathon mark can be a really important milestone, and perhaps you responded to it with a little surge in pace, maybe feeling close enough to home to push on. But just keep in mind, pacing here is important. And if you try too hard to defend your speed, then the final 2k can be very long indeed. So this may sound like I'm stuck on repeat, and this is a recurring theme in these clips, but don't let yourself go too much here. And the reason is that this tree on your left now, which coincides with a 44k mark, signifies the start of a much steeper part of the climb. This is the final 2 kilometers, and this is where it really does start to bite. From this point, depending on your speed, you have between 8 and perhaps 15 minutes of uphill to negotiate. What makes this a little tough is that you'll leave the houses behind and start quite a twisty section up in among the trees. This means that you don't actually get a sense for where the summit is until you're almost at it. And so it's doubly important here to just stay in the moment, don't let your mind wander too far ahead of you, and focus on relaxation. You'll then hit the first two of these bends, first to your left and then off to your right up ahead. And these signal the start of a section that's maybe 8-9% to steep compared to the 5% you've just left behind. You'll certainly notice this in your legs and lungs, and so it's important here that you just relax. Nothing suffocates speed quite like tension, and so try to be loose here, from your facial muscles all the way down to the legs. What really helps is to try to keep a nice rhythm going and a constant cadence. Your strides may get shorter, but try to keep light and keep the frequency of your steps up. Concentrate also on your glutes and core in order to stay strong but relaxed. This section here is around 9 or 10 percent, and unfortunately, there's really no magic recipe, nothing that I or anyone else can say that will make this easy for you. However, this is the challenge you've been training for. It's the reason you're special for entering and finishing this race. And so the only thing that I will say is that this is your moment where you can embrace the challenge and rise up and respond to it. So just stay positive here. You've come this far strongly. And so again, relax and take it section by section, stride by stride. There's a huge crowd waiting for you, only minutes away to carry you on. When you get to this fairly long straight, and you can see the car barriers on your left-hand side, you know that you're almost within sight of the summit. The crowd at the top 
is among the most vocal and sizable in the whole race, and so just let their energy add to yours for the final few hundred meters. Remember, on these steep roads, you'll probably run between 1 and 2 minutes per kilometer slower than your overall race speed, so don't become too negative at the pace. It's expected. That road sign followed by this circle sign is pretty much the sign that you've done it. You've made it all the way to the summit. At the top you'll branch off to the left. It doesn't descend immediately but you know that the worst is over. There's now less than 10 kilometers to go and hopefully you're still feeling fairly strong and ready to tackle the bends down into Kirstenbosch. Don't again get too carried away just yet because there still are 10 k's to go but you can take heart in the fact that you've conquered the steepest part of the race and what's left for you now are the finishing touches, and that's what we'll discuss later this week.